because I didn't do a fine art course, I don't have the sort of same background in conceptualism or what is the art about. I started making work based on old master paintings and how to get the light into those paintings is um, the masters themselves starting an apprenticeship at 13 or 14 years old. Nowadays, people just can't paint like that. It just isn't possible. So um, in, in the very early time, I think that um, the sort of, uh, what am I saying, to... Yeah, I, I took it quite seriously and went, went to the National Gallery in London and always back to, to the, the V&A, to basically back and forth, looking at the paintings, actually reworking them, or reworking sections of them. Um, the very earliest, back to the 13th century, I found uh, the religious paintings, the backgrounds weren't there as, as, as landscapes. They were simply there to enhance the figure, e either the, the Christ figure or the, or the, the Virgin. And... Um, as time went on, you know, uh, landscape became a, a, a genre in its own right. So I suppose I sort of drifted into something I liked, and, and then our, that moved in many, many different directions. But um, so these these started off very simply, and then and then grew uh, from from uh, I suppose stolen elements is really all I can describe it as. They weren't a place; they were never places. They were a tree and a cloud and a rock. So that <laughs> so there was like a thief. Going into, I find a piece of in somebody's work, and I say, "Oh, that's nice." Yeah, so take it and put it down, and then put something next to it, and then change them around until they actually have no resemblance. Bear no resemblance to where they were, the elements came from originally. Okay, so I would draw them on a master plate, basically, which is the those, those stolen elements, and then I would transfer it to a, a second and third and fourth plates, and so the color layers are built up. In etching, it's fantastic that you can do that because the richness of color and tone is um, it's very velvety and rich. So um, I would start from working from light, light to dark. So the, the palest plate going down first. If anybody knows anything about printing, it's layer upon layer of color that works. And so if you want the deepest, densest parts, that's dark on all four plates. Uh, and, and, and if you want it very pale, it's, it's, there's nothing in that area on, on all four plates. So I'm going to start, start by printing it. Um, I don't know how many of you know about... Um, about etching itself. Probably some of you are members of this studio and others are not, so I'll, I'll try and keep it uh, simple. Okay, so, uh, intaglio uh, means that the, uh, the, the surface is etched, so the image is etched into the surface. Uh, so, so, the aquatint is the tonal area, so that, that's, um, in tone, is, is, is bitten in, whereas the bottom part you can see is not bitten, it's, 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 it's uh, still smooth. As, as it bites, the aquatint is, is like grains of resin are, are dropped onto the plate, the acid bites in, and then, then you take it off, take the resin away. You're left with sort of fingers of metal. And the deeper they are, the more ink they hold. Okay? So, yeah, here we go. So when you wipe the ink across the surface, it's going down into those, into those um, recesses in the metal. Okay? And, and that will hold ink beautifully, I hope. Well, it has. I, I tried it earlier today. Of course. <laughs> yes, I should say that. Today was a bit of a challenge for me. Uh, Regina is quite tough in many ways. And uh, I, I come from the old fashioned toxic school of printmaking. We, we use foul acids and. Um, uh, yeah, terrible solvents and, and all of that. But I got you get used to it. Um, so Re Re Regina has yeah. So I have to transfer using different inks here, and we're going to tomorrow then in the workshop use uh, her methods and, and the methods of this. But I'm learning too as it goes on. Uh, whether I'll change is another question entirely, of course. <laughs> so um, so if any of you want to ask me things as I'm working, please do. Feel free to do that. What? Oh yeah, sorry. This is this is sort of cheap lining material, which is sort of it's it, it's like um, silk, but it's not. It's synthetic silk. It's not that expensive. But yeah. So so when you wipe it across, it's so smooth. The softer if you use soft material, it actually pulls the ink out of out of the, the lines and aquatints. So you don't want that. You want to leave it there in in the lines. You know. So if I'm the pressure, I I was trying to explain to Regina why I would always work on the corner of something like this. If you can see that I have my finger on my left hand underneath the plate and the top one on the right. So when I put it on, it pulls off the edge. There's no ink, there's very little around here. So there's no mess anywhere. There's no ink anywhere. 
And, um, and so therefore, I, I print quite fast. These editions are produced fairly quickly. I have a, a few assistants, okay? So there it is. I, I, I want what's called Platon in the, very, in the very pale areas. The more I wipe it, there's nothing at all left. And I might leave a little, very fine layer on here. But you'll see it when the print comes out. So this is sort of, a, I suppose, this was, this was an image in Sweden I made a few years ago. Uh, I travelled to a workshop there in the forest in central Sweden. So um, I've had a number of shows in that place. So picking out with a corner of a piece of card areas of white, of white for the trees just to, to give you a sort of, uh, you know, a, a sharp tonal you know, difference. Okay, so I'm going to wipe that, the corners off, so, or the edges, so as it's not, um, it's going to end up nice and clean. Okay, that's the first plate. And the second plate, it's two colours. So I would mix them all, proof it, get it right, and then, then have my colours and store them like that in plastic. Generally print maybe 10 or 20 or 30 within a few days uh, of each other, quite quickly. So this is uh, raw umber. Do you um, usually use the same set of colours? Uh, yeah, I do. I, 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 yeah, it's sort of, I suppose a formula you might call it, but it depends on the print. A lot of the prints in here, I should have talked about that exhibition, they, they come from sort of on the past 12 years, from various different projects, so they're all quite, it's, it's, it's like a small retrospective in a way. So that they don't all, they weren't all made at the same time. But in general I do have certainly that yellow, and, and, and I use a blue-black, which is at the end, rather than just plain pure black. And in between, pretty much the same browns and, and yellows. I, I might deviate, depending on the image, for, um, you know, to get something else. I'm curious, um, this um, approach you use for your color storage and uh, yeah. uh, is that something of your own or is that typical of no. like Irish printmakers? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you steal that idea, please? No, I, I never stole it. Well, it's, it's strange you should say that. I, work, I worked in a workshop called the uh, Graphic Studio uh, Dublin, print workshop. And there's about 50 members or 60 members, and uh, we have visiting artists as well coming, quite well known, both British and Irish uh, artists come, come to work there, and editions are produced with them. But we had a director in, I think about, well, when I started, I started in 83, and she was American, she was from Minnesota. Her father was J.F. Powers, quite a, quite a well known American short story writer. And um, she was pretty tough. I, 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 yeah, it needs somebody who, who has a sort of firm hand and sort of read, read, read the Bible from the Tamarind and from Crown Point and all the American, um, you know, the well-known workshops, and basically put those systems in place. They've really taken very good care of when, you, when you're biting the plate, being really careful. I don't mean to a scientific degree, but you know, you know what I mean. Just getting it right, and then... Um, Reproducible procedures. Exactly. So you know where you, why, why you're getting what you're getting, what you want, and then being able to control it, complete, being in control of it. Not just the biting and the making of the plates, but the printing of them. So as you get perfection every time, pretty much, within reason, within a small range. So where does that bring us back to the bags? Why does it bring us back to the bags? Mary Perez used to do that. She used to actually tie them with uh, string and put them in a jar of water. Mm -hmm. Then you would get ten years out of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because there's no um, oxygen getting out. So there it is. Again, I'm, I'm just taken off. And, and well, I, I know people here ask me about tissue. They use telephone books here. But that's acid-free tissue. Just, just to sort of really shine up that, that, that sort of foreground area to, um, to get a uh, very, you know, clean, no tone on it. I like to use Hanamula uh, Natural. It's a sort of a soft, warm paper, and um, you know it has a slight texture. Wonderful. Um, yeah, I ended up there in the end. And I, you, you, 
one does fall into habits, you just don't like changing it. I'm moving in with the corner of this so I can get really fine into very tiny areas with the corner of a card. You can use a cotton bud if it's a bigger area or, you know, so localised wiping, leaving heavier layers here, lighter there, being very, very sort of specific about getting, you know, building up um, what you want in the print. So I, I suppose these really are all about the build of layer of, layer, layer of colour to get a sort of richness and intensity, you know. But the more you know about it, I mean, in a, in a way there's so many things with etching that you can't get in any other medium, you know. Lithography and the tamarind, what a fantastic place, but I don't like lithography, it's dead, yeah. you know. Uh, uh, you, ju you just can't get the richness, it's just not possible. Like, there's nothing like the, the, the sort of the suck of, of, of thick ink when you're pulling back the paper. Wonderful. So I've worked in workshops in China, in Sweden, and in Finland, and in America actually as well. And all of them, as Regina and myself were talking about, have different uh, systems, different methods, different habits, and you pick up things and, you know, it's always great to, to sort of see how other people approach, and, uh, you know, print making. I'm not sure, yeah, this is out, so these are too, the roller's too big to actually hold it, so I'm just going to use a piece of steel, okay? Mm -hmm. And then we just peel that back. Okay, so that's the first plate. Nice. Now this, this also, uh, this is just an object we had to, we had to sort of um, uh, drag into action, but I have a much smaller and heavier steel one at home, which is much more accurate. But anyway, we're going we're gonna to hope that nothing moves. So I just hold that down, lift this guy out. Ah. I love stealing ideas. I mean, I love uh, <laughs> learning. Uh, you just got to be careful not to it's move this. It's called learning. Really happy. <laughs> so this is, this is registration, basically. And uh, I suppose it's not. It's not rocket science, really. You just make sure it's the right way around. Exactly. <laughs> that happened to me today. It was upside down. So. Yeah. It depends on the image. It was an abstract image. Yeah, <laughs> then again, you might get something better sometimes, <laughs> upside down. Well, the, the paper's been in plastic under, under, under weight, and I, I dip the paper into the bath very quickly and take it out quickly. I don't have it soaking wet. The, the wetter it is, the more, the more likelihood of stretch. Yeah. The higher the pressure, the more likelihood of stretch. Mm -hmm. So, pressure not too high, moisture not too much, it's generally fairly, uh, you know, Now, some people have it long at both ends, so they wouldn't have to turn it. I generally just turn it like that, do you see? Mm -hmm. Now, if it was staying in the rollers, I'll just push it back in that way and then peel it, peel it back. But I'm not doing that, so... So there it is. Okay, I'll leave it there and you can come over and have a look. Alright? Well, thank you very much, all for. Oh, okay.